Hi, I'm Suzanne Bonamici, and I represent Senate District 17, which is about two-thirds, thank you, Nellie, about two-thirds in uh, Washington County and the remaining third in Multnomah County. Uh, I want to thank the forum for uh, adjusting the schedule to accommodate us today. As soon as I found out that today is our in-district day, which is the legislature's uh, giving us a spring break today, this is this is an in-district day, uh, we contacted the forum because we knew you were meeting today. So thank you uh, again to Ted and to the whole forum for accommodating us today. Uh, I want to recognize my staff, John Atkins, who's here today. If you're not already receiving my uh, email newsletter, John will take your email and uh, that lets you know when I'm doing town halls and constituent coffees. Uh, I serve on three committees, uh, the, the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee, the Senate Education Committee, and I was also asked this session to chair the Senate's first Committee on Consumer Protection and Public Affairs. So I'm going to focus most of my comments on, on the Consumer Protection Committee, uh, but first I want to talk briefly about what Representative Edwards mentioned, and that's the budget rebalance because and the budget going forward, because that is affecting truly everything that we do, the policy position that we can pass uh, and the rest of our session uh, is, is so tied to the budget crisis. Uh, Representative Edwards mentioned the kicker reform. I actually took time from my day uh, to go into the Senate Committee on Revenue and testify in support of that bill. Uh, Senate Joint Resolution 29 is the bill. It's something that uh, editorial uh, boards are saying is the uh, single most important step we can take to get our fiscal house in order. And if you think about what just happened, we had this $855 million shortfall for the 0709 budget, but we sent back about more than a billion dollars in the form of a kicker. Uh, there's a reason why no other state has this kind of policy, because it doesn't make fiscal sense. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. We and and it's we we do need to refer this to the voters and we're going to be working hard on sending a message about about what we need to do to make sure that we can prevent situations like this from happening again uh, so that's something that I'm, I'm very committed to. I don't serve on the Revenue Committee, but I know that there's a bipartisan support and we're going to be working hard uh, to get this out to the voters and to send the message that this is a sound reform. It doesn't eliminate the kicker, but it does help fund our rainy day fund so that we can prevent uh, such serious problems in the future. Uh, the Judiciary Committee I want to mention, we have a, a very busy Judiciary Committee, and I, we have the Chair of the House Judiciary Committee here, Representative Barker. In the Senate, we have, and, and also in the House, we have combined civil and criminal. In, the, in previous sessions, it's been split so that civil law was in one subcommittee and, and criminal is in the other. We do them all together. We've, we, we deal with a, a very broad, uh, diverse uh, range of issues. Uh, I'll just mention a few that we've been working on in the Senate side. Uh, we passed a, a bill that implements the victims' rights provisions that the voters put into the Constitution. Uh, there were some concerns about how those were being implemented procedurally, so we spent a lot of time on, uh, I spent time on an interim work group to, to set that procedure out. Uh, we're currently debating some changes to our Oregon administrative law system. And then we've also passed out of the Senate uh, reform to our state uh, tort caps. And that came in response to the decision regarding uh, OHSU. And there was also uh, an interim work group on this issue. And the, the bill that we passed sets up basically a two-tier system one tier where we've raised the caps for the state and for OHSU and a lower tier for local governments. Uh, the local governments came in and really uh, expressed some concern about being raised uh, to a higher level. So that bill has passed the Senate. I believe it's, it's over in the House. Uh, it's very important for, uh, for certainty. Uh, it doesn't completely uh, end the possibility that somebody's going to challenge the state tort caps, uh, but it will give clarity to uh, state and local governments. Uh, now, uh, with regard to education, we also have the chair of the state of the Senate Education Committee here, Senator Hass. So he'll be focusing on those issues. I just wanted to mention uh, one issue that I've been working on in education, and that's improving civics and personal finance education. Uh, I did have a bill that was passed to declare. Uh, particular day, Civics Education Day, to raise awareness and provide more staff development so that teachers can incorporate more civics education into their existing curriculum. Consumer Protection is uh, a committee that's 
I believe, critically important in difficult economic times. And some of the things that we're working on in the Senate Consumer Protection Committee are a foreclosure mediation program. And this is something where we're working uh, to, you know, the federal program is changing. Uh, the, the president has uh, the, some incentives proposed, but we need to make sure that we have the structure here in the state so that we can get the parties around the table. And I've been working on mortgage lending issues uh, since my, my uh, time on the House Consumer Protection Committee. We want to make sure that if there's a possibility that uh, there can be a, a modification of a mortgage, if somebody's facing foreclosure, that they can get around the table with a neutral uh, mediator. So we're, we're, I'm working with the Attorney General's Office, the Department of Consumer and Business Services, the financial services industry, and many consumer advocates to make sure that we have that uh, structure in place for foreclosure mediation. And hopefully, we know that won't work for everyone, but for people with a possibility of modifying their mortgage to avoid foreclosure, uh, this will provide the structure for that. An interesting issue that we're also working on, wi again, with the financial services industry, is what's happening with the garnishment of exempt funds. You may know that there are several funds that are exempt. That means protected from garnishment. Those are things like Social Security, veterans' benefits. And what happens now is if those funds are in a bank account, even though they are protected, if the bank or credit union gets a garnishment order, they have to turn those funds over to the creditor. And then it's up to the consumer to challenge that and try to reverse the transaction. So we're working with the financial services industry to make sure that we can have a workable structure, structure to actually prevent that from happening. Uh, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, I believe we have a, a, a lot of possibility there. I'm also working on some debt collection issues. Uh, we have a Fair Debt Collection Practices Act in our state. It's similar to the federal act. It's to make sure that uh, debt collection is fair. It doesn't impede the fair collection of debts, but it does provide that uh, uh, people collecting debts have to obey the law and not harass Oregon consumers. Uh, and, and last but not least, uh, there's a bill that I worked on getting together that has bipartisan support of almost every legislator uh, in, in the uh, Oregon legislature, and that's a bill honoring Mary Alice Ford. And thank you. And I believe that that's House, let, tell, let me tell you the number, House Concurrent Resolution 7. I believe that's been referred to a committee chaired by uh, Representative Reed. So I, I look forward to uh, having that uh, up on the floor of the House and the Senate to honor Mary Alice. And I look forward to your question. Thank you.